This Fertosa colony is very important because it has changer in it. The changer is the unique Fertosa you see in the middle of the screen. And all the fish in here are from the same family. So I'm trying to get more offspring to look like her. So filtration is very important to me. Now the one thing I have unique about this colony that most people do not have, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but most people do not have, is a fluidized bed filter. Now if you look here, I have a pump. Uh, it only costs about $10 from Amazon. It goes up through here and it goes out of the aquarium. You come over here. It's a sea storm. Um, they're rated for about a 150 gallon tank. They no longer make these anymore that I, that I know of. But I had them from a long time ago and started using them again. The best things about these is there's really basically no maintenance that you have to do to them. Occasionally you may have to clean around the impeller when you take out the the power head or your pump out well, that can be done just once a year now you see on the top there's a little bit of debris up there that breaks down with the sand hitting it over time it constantly hits that now it constantly grows new bacteria because it sloughs off the bigger bacteria as the sand hits each other which allow the new bacteria actually absorbs more of the ammonia nitrite and nitrate I did an experiment with this and I was able to keep my nitrates below 40 parts per million for a whole month and uh, <clears throat> that was without doing a water change so I thought that was pretty impressive. Now I don't longer wait for a month to do a water change. <clears throat> as the water will get a yellow tint to it, as far as the ammonia nitrite and nitrate, those factors are good. I'll give a link to a description and a place where you can get fluidized filters if you're interested uh, in the, the description of the video below. Now let me show you another thing I have on this, another type of filtration I have uh, for the aquarium. So you see an overflow box here. And now on the other end here, I have a spray bar. Now I also have a power head that I use for circulation, but I only use it during the day, for a few hours a day. Uh, a few times a week to stir up the dead spots. Then I turn it off because Frontosas don't like extreme flow in the aquarium. And you can shorten your extreme flow by having a bigger spray bar. It will even out the flow and there will be less turbulence in the aquarium. So let's go and see where all this water goes from the overflow it is unique. Let's go down here and down here we have a 29 gallon aquarium. You see it's painted. It's old. It's probably around 30 years old that I got at a yard sale. And in there you see a bio wheel. And on top of that bio wheel there is some media and some filter pads. And it's constantly uh, the water is constantly getting air on the sponge, so that's the wet-dry filtration part of this aquarium. I also have some filter pads underneath it to get more debris. And then I added three compartments that I could put different types of media in to the left of it. Now the water comes in on the right-hand side through these two hoses here. And then it goes up you can see the pump on the left hand side there which allows the water to come from here to oh, through these compartments here to the pump then it goes up 
and then it goes back to the spray bar. Now I like this setup the best because if I want to change out the filter media, I don't have to lug, there's my cat, that's Tara. I don't have to lug a, a canister filter back to the, the bathroom or outside to change it. I can just have a bucket and take out a, little, a few of the filter pads. I don't have to do that very often. Maybe once a month or even longer. And uh, then I clean them and I can put them back. And it's not as, you know, it's not as physically hard. So this is a little bit unique. Uh, you can do your own method to have a setup like this. But like I say, the water comes down through here, through a filter pad here, through the bio wheel here, which constantly gets air to it, which is a wet dry. Filter pads down here. You can put different things in between these slots. Uh, made from a uh, egg crate. You, you use it to put under fluorescent lights. You can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. And then I put the pump over here so the water goes this way through everything and goes back up to the aquarium. Now if you have like two canister filters on your aquarium and your water is really clean well, that's great. But it's a little bit harder to clean those canister filters and keep the bio uh, good bacteria from getting killed out unless you use your old aquarium water. Just more of a hassle. Now myself I have like about 10 to 12 canister filters so it's not like I don't use them but I like this method better because there's less maintenance involved. Alright, that's it for my uh, showing you know, filtration. Now, you, you may or may not want to use something like this in your own setup. But, everybody's curious about what other people use. And I've learned from seeing other people's videos what I could use in different setups. And this is what I use in mine. And as you also see, I don't have any air stones in here. And I'm definitely not against air stones or putting air into an aquarium. Because the flow gives water, the flow on the top is plenty of oxygen. And also the flow going over the bio wheel gives oxygen in the water as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And stay tuned for more videos on front toses and other cichlids from Ricky Kennerly Cichlids.